Hey fellow learner, my name is Daniel Santana. My name is Janelle Bernardino, and we're grade 11 students from Rizal National Science High School. As our basic calculus project this semester, we're here to discuss about getting the limits of the rational, radical, and polynomial functions. The objectives of this video is to help fellow learners understand and apply the limit laws in solving the limits of rational, radical, and polynomial functions. As a team effort, Janelle made illustrations, and I will be the one for the voiceover. So sit back, relax, and watch attentively. Let's start the discussion now about the limits of rational, radical, and polynomial functions. First, what are these types of function? A rational function is a function that is a fraction and has a property that both its numerator and denominator are polynomials. x over x minus 1, x squared minus 3x minus 4, all over x minus 4, and 1 over x are all examples of rational function. A radical function is simply a function that contains a square root. Square root of x, square root of x minus 2, square root of 4 minus x are all examples of radical function. A polynomial function is a function such as a quadratic, a cubic, a quartic, and so on, involving only non-negative integer powers of x. x squared minus 3x minus 4, 5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 7, and x cubed plus 4 are all examples of polynomial functions. Let's now discuss how to get the limits of rational functions. For example, the limit of the quantity of x squared plus 6x plus 5 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. For the solution, direct substitution gives a indeterminate form of 0 over 0. The numerator can be separated into the product of two binomials x plus 5 and x plus 1. So the limit is equivalent to the limit of the quantity of x plus 5 times x plus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. From here, we can simply divide x plus 1 out of the fraction. This gives us the limit of x plus 5 as x approaches negative 1. The expression inside the limit is now linear, so the limit can be found by direct substitution. This obtains negative 1 plus 5 is equal to 4. We then can say that the limit of the quantity of x squared plus 6x plus 5 all over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 is equal to 4. Let's now discuss how to get the limit of radical functions. For example, the limit of the quantity of the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4 as x approaches 4. Solution Direct substitution gives the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. We can multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the expression containing the square root. The conjugate of the two-term expression is just the same expression with the subtraction switch to addition or vice versa. In this case, the conjugate of the square root of x minus 2 is the square root of x plus 2. This gives us the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2 over the square root of x plus 2. We will use fall method for the numerator and then no need to multiply the denominator because we will cancel it later. This gives us the square root of x raised to 2 minus 2 squared all over x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2 is equal to x minus 4 over x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2. From here, we can simply divide x minus 4 out of the fraction. This gives us the limit of 1 over the square root of x plus 2 as x approaches 4. We can now get the limit through direct substitution of 4 to the value of x in the expression. This obtains 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2. So 1 over 2 plus 2 is equal to 1 fourth. We then can say that the limit of the quantity of the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4 as x approaches 4 is equal to 1 fourth. Let's now discuss how to get the limit of polynomial functions. Getting the limit of polynomial function is a simple task. Oftentimes, direct substitution is all you need to get the limit. For example, the limit of 5x cubed minus x squared plus 3x plus 7 as x approaches 5. We will then substitute 5 to the values of x in the expression. So we get 5 times 5 cubed minus 5 squared plus 3 times 5 plus 7. By applying power rule, we can now get 5 times 125 minus 25 
plus 3 times 5 plus 7. Then we apply the multiplication, 625 minus 25 plus 15 plus 7. By adding, we can now get 622. Therefore, the limit of 5x cubed minus x squared plus 3x plus 7 as x approaches 5 is equal to 622. That's it! In summary, we get the limits of rational functions through direct substitution. However, if the resulting value is 0 over 0 or indeterminate form, we need to manipulate the expressions through various methods such as factoring and cancellation. Then, we can now directly substitute the values of x to the simplified form of the expression to get its limit. Next, in getting the limit of radical function, we also use the direct substitution method. However, if the resulting value again is 0 over 0 or indeterminate form, we need to manipulate the expression through multiplying the conjugate of the radical expression to simplify it. After that, we can now directly substitute the value of x to get the limit. Finally, to get the limit of polynomial function is not as complex as finding the limit of rational and radical functions. We can directly substitute the value of x in the expression to get its limit. Simple as that! However, try not to get confused as most given polynomial function will contain numerous terms. Now that we already know how to get the limit of rational, radical, and polynomial functions, let's have a quick assessment. Pause the video now until you answer the 5 given items. Congratulations! The following are the answers to the previous assessment. Number 1, the limit of the function is equal to 1. Number 2, the limit of the function is equal to 1 over 6. Number 3, the limit of the function is equal to 5. Number 4, the limit of the function is equal to 681. Number 5, the limit of the function is equal to 1 over 12. I hope this video helped you in applying the limit loss in solving the limits of rational, radical, and polynomial functions. You may also watch other videos from this channel to continue learning about basic calculus. May you practice and continue your learning process. Thanks for watching!